cold and dark winters in Alaska can make the hours you have to spend in school seem twice as long. Okay, okay, everyone pay attention. I know it's near the end of the day, but I want to remind all of you that your science reports are due on Friday. And Friday is only three days away. Now, are there any questions? Yes, Richard, what is it? How long do these reports have to be? The report should be three pages long. And don't forget the diagram. While everyone else in the class was sitting for the science report, Robert just sat in the back of the room, not really listening to our teacher. Robert was not a bad student, but it seemed that he always had his mind on other things than schoolwork. Since he was my friend, I worried when Robert didn't pay attention in class. Okay, Richard, that should answer your question. Any more? All right, that's it for today. I'll see you tomorrow. Hey, don't forget your science book. Oh, that old thing? It's too heavy. Mary, Robert, you haven't forgotten, have you? So it was our turn to stay after class and clean the blackboard and straighten up the chairs. I'll be back shortly. Come on, let's get this over with. I want to go home. Have you started your report yet, Robert? Report. It seemed that Robert hated talking about the science report almost as much as he disliked going after class. Well, if I were smart, I'd be out of here right now. Let me help. It's no big deal. They're just a bunch of old books. You should be careful anyway. No. I wonder what this guy's doing. It looks like a picture of a shaman. You know what a shaman is, don't you? Of course I know what a shaman is. Are you sure? Well, sort of. Oh, here, just listen to this. Long before the time of doctors, and long before the first hospitals were built, the people of Alaska relied on their own natural remedies to cure their sick. Many of these remedies were made from special flowers, herbs, roots, or berries that the women and children would collect. These herbs and berries were then mixed together to make special ointments and potions. For each illness, there was a different natural remedy. When someone got sick, the people knew which of these potions or ointments would help to make them better. With this knowledge of natural remedies, the early natives were able to heal cuts, bruises, burns, and even mend broken bones. But sometimes, even all these natural cures weren't enough, and the sick person would not get better. When all else failed, the people would turn to their shaman. Each village had their own shaman. If someone was very sick, the shaman would sing and dance, and with his supernatural powers, ask the spirits to heal the sick person. Some shamans would even leave their villages and wander alone to gather special potions or to commune with their spirits. But the shamans who left their villages would always return and help. That was really something. Those shamans must have been real important people in their villages. What can be more important than making sick people better? 
Are you sure you never read this book before? No. I wonder what it's about. Well, why don't you just read it and find out? The snows had finally melted, and it was the first real warm day of summer. After the dark winter nights, the many hours of bright sunshine were never enough for J.R. and his friends. And the boys decided to have a race to the last fish wheel on the river. On your mark, get set, go! That hurt. Oh. Mom. My ankle. I think I hurt my ankle. After his fall, J.R. was taken to the community healthy. J.R., how did this happen? I was down by the river. If ever anyone in the village had a bad cold, a stomach ache, or a pet, they would go to the health aid for help. Does it hurt here? No. How about here? No. There? The community health aid is someone trained in all phases of preliminary medical care. No. Alaska Native Health Service. The ankle looked hurt, and the health aide decided that JR should go to the hospital for x ray This scholar, he's in severe. The community health aide must know how to evaluate all types of medical problems, and must always stay in contact with clinics and hospitals, just in case there was an emergency. Yes, I'm sending him in by plane as soon as possible. At the hospital, x-rays were taken of the ankle. An x-ray machine works like a camera, only it takes pictures of the inside of people. In order to take the right pictures, or x-rays, the technicians must know a lot about the complicated machines they use. That didn't hurt, did it? No, it didn't. So they can position the patient for the x-ray, the technicians must have a good understanding of the human body. Taking x-rays also requires the technicians to know a lot about electricity, voltage, exposure, and mathematics. The doctor carefully studies the x-rays and sees if there's any evidence of injury or break. He also reads the medical report from the community health aide. At the same time, the nurse takes JR's blood pressure and checks his pulse. The doctor is responsible for making the final decision of how best to treat the patient. As this actually shows, um, he doesn't have any broken bones, but he does have some pretty badly torn ligaments. But doctors can make the decisions only with the help of other medical professionals. Okay. JR, what you have is a pretty badly sprained ankle, but you don't have any broken Good news. The ankle is not seriously hurt. It's only a sprain. Okay. okay. While the doctor talks to JR, the nurse carefully wraps a special bandage that will help support the injured ankle. It has been a long day for J.R., but he has learned many new things and made many new friends.
Alicia and her grandmother were the best of friends. They would often take long walks together and talk about many things. Grandmother would tell stories of when she was a young girl, and Alicia would explain things that she had just learned in school. But even though they were the best of friends, Alicia was very unhappy that her grandmother refused to go to the dentist. Everyone in the family had a dental checkup each year, except, of course, grandmother. And this made Alicia very sad. Alicia always tried to explain that going to the dentist was very important and almost never hurt. But grandmother didn't care. Why should I go, she would say. My teeth are perfect. Alicia knew that her grandmother was very stubborn. The only time I'm going to open my mouth for a dentist, said grandmother, is to say no thank you. Alicia tried and tried. But no amount of talking was going to change grandmother's mind. Many weeks later, there was a loud knocking on the door of Alicia's house. Sure enough, grandmother had a bad toothache. You better go to the dentist tomorrow. You take Alicia with you. Next day, Alicia and her grandmother went to the dentist. Because grandmother was just a little afraid of being at the dentist, Alicia stayed with her. 28 is okay, 29, still. The dentist first cleaned and checked all of grandmother's teeth. One, two, three, two is still. The dental assistant kept a record and marked everything down on a special chart. 31, a quarter ago. 32, missing. Grandmother was surprised that the dentist was a woman. I didn't know there was a woman dentist, too. Oh, yeah. But Alicia knew, of course, that women can be dentists, too. After giving Grandmother some Novocaine, so it wouldn't hurt, the dentist started to work on the tooth with the cavity. Then, using their special instruments, the dentist and assistant began to remove the tooth decay. The dentist and the assistant had to work together to make sure they cleaned the whole tooth and still did not hurt grandmother. When they were finally finished, grandmother looked at Alicia and remembered all the talks they had. Alicia was right, thought grandmother. A trip to the dentist did not hurt as much as having a bad toothache. Mm. Patrick loved basketball. He was not the tallest nor the best player in the village, but Patrick would rather play basketball than do practically anything else. In the middle of an important game, Patrick kept missing easy shots. And then he had a hard time passing to his teammates. Patrick just couldn't seem to focus his eyes. And he didn't understand what was happening. In the coming weeks, Patrick had a harder and harder time seeing many things. One day, when he was fishing with his friends, 
Hey, Pat, isn't that the possible? Patrick couldn't even recognize his father's boat. This made him very upset, and Patrick decided to go to the optometrist at the hospital. Can you tell me where the eye doctor is? Okay, thank you. At last, Patrick finally found the optometrist. Did you have a hard time finding my office pad? No. Could you please look up towards that direction? An optometrist, specially trained to examine eyes and treat problems they may have. The optometrist first checks Patrick's eyes for any sign of injury. The optometrist explained to Patrick that damaged eyes can hurt someone's vision. Look right at the light, Pat. Next, he made sure that both of Patrick's eyes were coordinated and worked together. That's good. He even examined for traces of diabetes, hypertension, or other problems that could cause bad eyesight. That's good. Finally, the optometrist put a special machine over Patrick's eyes, turned some dials, and made him read the chart on the wall. P -E -C -F -D. This machine tested if Patrick needed eyeglasses and indicated how strong they should be. P -E -C -F -D. Using the eye machine, Patrick could see clearly again, even things that were small and far away. Pat, you are slightly nearsighted. We're going to have to fit you for some glasses. Okay. There was nothing wrong. All Patrick needed was a pair of eyeglasses. With his new eyeglasses, Patrick would be able to play basketball and not miss so many shots. I thought Patrick would never find that eye doctor. Yeah, he really needed glasses. I bet his basketball game gets better and he... You two still here? I thought you'd be finished with your work by now. We've been reading this book about all the different ways there to help people, like an x-ray technician or an optometrist, or a dentist, a nurse, or even a doctor. Really? Yeah, there's all kinds of neat things you can do. Only thing I can't understand is where can we learn to be all of these things? Lots of places, Mary. There are training programs in hospitals, community colleges, and universities. But there aren't any places like that in the village. We'd have to leave. But remember what we read about the shamans, Mary? They'd go with their villages to learn songs and dances. Oh, yeah. But that didn't stop them, did it, Mrs. Field? No, it didn't, Robert. We don't have to leave the villages forever just to study medicine. We can always come back. Robert and I learned a lot about health careers that afternoon. But we also learned a few things about ourselves. Good night, Mrs. Fields. Good night, Mary. Now do you have your science book? I wouldn't go home without it.